Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Conversation with Freedom. Today, I have a very special guest. Like we've been working on this for some time now, and I'm so, so super excited to finally get to do this. Rebecca, welcome to my podcast. Hello, Freedom. Thank you. Thank you for having me with you today. And thank you for your patience for waiting for one month of health recovery <laughs> for us to be able to have this conversation today. I'm so grateful to you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. For those people who don't know who Rebecca is, please tell us more about yourself and what you do. Okay, so my name is Rebecca Anelia. I'm from Mauritius. And my job is a healer and I am also working as a trauma specialist and also as a clinical supervisor with an NGO here in Mauritius. And um, I have uh, been certified as a mental health ambassador. So mental health is something that is really close to, to my heart and helping people who are dealing with stressful moments and struggling with their mental health. And um, Pertaining to this with a colleague of mine, we have decided to launch here in Mauritius something yeah. which is amazing because last month we celebrated our first year of this activity all around the island, which is called the Mental Health, Mental Health Roadshow for Mauritius. Yeah. So okay. we do it in public areas. People can just come sit and talk while they are doing their shopping. And it is free when we are doing this event monthly in the shopping malls. Yeah. Before we get into the amazing <laughs> work that you're doing, please <laughs> tell us more about how was it like growing up in Mauritius? Oh, um, well, growing in Mauritius, like there are different cultures. And it's really like we call this the rainbow of cultures. There are people from different backgrounds, different communities, and we have festivals and celebrations all around the year because we have the Christian, the Muslim, the Hindu, Buddhist people. There's a blend of everything. Mauritius is a blend of the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it's... Um, it's an island next to, to the huge island Madagascar. So it's easy to find us. So you just look at the map, you scroll until you find Madagascar, and then you just swipe right and you're going to find a dot in the yeah. Indian Ocean. And that's Madagascar <laughs> Island. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's, now let's get into the amazing work that you're doing. Tell us more. How did it all start? Um, this is a really nice question because uh, last last weekend uh, I participated in a in a talk, and the host introduced, and the way he introduced it, it reminded me that he was absolutely right. Being a healer, I didn't choose, but healing chose me. I so, also. <laughs> so yes, I I, lo I just love what I do nowadays. I didn't plan to to be a professional healer to make it my day my my, my job mm -hmm. and to become a mental health therapist and all of that um, <clears throat> I started my career in the corporate mm -hmm. I had a regular nine to five job I was just doing things and then one day I was like I, ha I have something to do I need to find what I have to do and then <clears throat> at uh, the age of 30 years I think you wake up at one moment in your life. And for me, it happened at, at 30 years. I got the huge wake up call and it was loud and strong. I couldn't do anything about it. So I engaged on my spiritual path. I went back to learning about spirituality. <clears throat> and thanks to my spiritual master who accepted me, who has been taking me under his shelter ever since, that I am the person talking to you today, sharing everything I am able to share with you today. So everything I do is dedicated to my, to my spiritual master and his wife because they make me who I am. So yeah. my job is basically the person that I have become is thanks to them. Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges that you've encountered along the way? 
Oh, a lot of them. <laughs> because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, because when you say the word that uh, you you're a healer people mm. kind of misinterpret it they have their own perception about the thing and coming from an island mm. <clears throat> this is a bit taboo but this is something which is very real mm. like uh, black magic is all over the place like you mm. know everyone at the corner of the street they can find some someone to to do all of these and they kind of misinterpret and they say oh but you are from the same background i'm like no no we do the total opposite of that mm. <laughs> mm. <Yeah. laughs> so that was the first challenge kind of explaining people what is healing because yes. of their previous maybe experience mm. because of the perception of people because of what they have seen through others experience uh, so that was a bit of a challenge that was maybe sometimes still but i really don't pay attention to it yeah because i'm like people who really <clears throat> are looking for something are looking for something positive in their life they're gonna understand without much explanation true they're going wow. to feel that they, they they've come to the right place doing the right thing and they're connected to the right people and that there is nothing to fear so that was in the beginning, that was quite of a challenge, and I, I, I often ask myself, am I doing the right thing? Did I engage into the right mm -hmm. path right now? So, and then I was like, mm -mm, I have to trust. I need mm -hmm. to trust and have faith, and I just need to just keep going, keep walking, and things are going to be okay. Yeah. What are some of the techniques that you share with your client that you would like to help people out there? Yeah, there are a lot of, of healing techniques that yeah. I have uh, learned from my spiritual master. So there are Amadeus shamanic technique. So it is a healing technique from the Amazon. Okay. And then, yes. <laughs> Amadeus. <laughs> yeah. Tell me, tell me more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is it is a technique that um, we connect with the breath of God, with the essence of God, and then there is a set of symbols, and we learn how to use them to be able to do healing. And we do healing for ourselves. We do healing for people. We do healing for situation. I mean, there is a list of things we can use this healing technique for. And then there is Reiki, Usui Reiki, Money Reiki, Violet Flame Reiki, Angelic Reiki, a list of it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we also have um, an amazing technique, an amazing healing modality, which is called Lama Fera technique. So Lama Fera healing, uh, it's, it's amazing. It's, <laughs> it's the world's fastest healing technique. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. And then um, what else do we do? There is meditation. I often prescribe this as a medit as as a form of medication to to my patients. Yeah. Like learning how to breathe correctly, learning how to meditate, learning how to practice gratitude, learning how to be mindful, to live in consciousness and all of that. And also, if they have certain um, <clears throat> health issues which require medication, of course, we encourage them always to go for their medical treatment and take their medicine and to use our um, ancient ways of medicine okay. to complement the medical treatment. Okay. Um, a lot of people who are going through mental health who are going through depression, what kind of advices or message would you send to someone who, who's having tough time, someone who's struggling mm -hmm. in, in the everywhere, in everywhere. In South Africa and Mauritius? People are going through With, a lot. So. Worldwide, yeah. worldwide, because with the COVID situation more, we have seen people like expressing how depressed, how anxious and yes. all the other form of mental illnesses uh, out there. <clears throat> My, I, it's not really of an advice or a message, it's mostly a form of encouragement is 
we do tell them like, please talk, please seek help and everything. And we know how difficult it is. Sometimes they feel like people closest to them are not there for them, cannot understand what they're going through, cannot understand anything about their reaction when they're going through this tough moment. <clears throat> do not compare your life with others. The first oh. thing, do not compare your, your present situation with your own past situation because people, people often uh, get depressed and they fall into the depression <clears throat> either because they compare yeah. with others or they compare their present life and they always are, oh, life in the past was so good. Oh, I wish I could go back to this time. And they forget that they are in this moment right now and they are missing out on something great because <laughs> they, they have not been able to let go of what is past. Yeah. <laughs> we all had this big say true i help people i yeah. am also a mental health a therapist but that doesn't mean that i haven't experienced mm. those moments of doubt those moments of low uh, feelings and emotions and everything not knowing what depression is like not not knowing what it feels like to to feel depressed or to be into that depression state i've been there i know what it's like and <clears throat> there are so many things that you can do to help yourself but my advice would be mostly for the one who can recognize or who can see that their loved ones their close ones are going through that tough moment yeah. hold their hand they just need a silent friend mm. next to them to make them feel less alone yeah. Because it's not as if for them, we can tell them so many things. We can tell them, no, you should not be doing this. You should not be thinking like this. They have to be in this moment, but they need someone, you know, just to give them a hand and say, hey, I'm here. You don't need to talk. I'm here. We can sit in your comfortable silence. And whenever you feel ready to break that silence, I'll be here to listen to you. Oh. So my message is not mostly for people going through that moment, but it's for those who can see their loved and close at once going through that tough moment, yeah. reach out to them, stay there with them, sit next to them. Don't force them to engage the conversation because they have to process what's happening inside of their mind first. Oh. So just be the silent friend yeah. sitting next to them, be that and let them feel comfortable to open up when they feel ready to. Yeah. That's so powerful. That's so. <laughs> that's so, <laughs> that's so I know, cool. I know. That's because when I when I experienced this and people were around me were like, "Talk to me, tell me what go, what's going on, tell me what's happening." I was like, <clears throat> "I know I'm not fine. I know I'm not doing well. But right now, I don't know how to explain what's happening to me. Mm. I don't have words." And I was feeling even more depressed because I couldn't express myself and I was feeling anxious as well I was like what am I going to tell people when they come and ask me how I'm doing mm -hmm. and why I'm like this why I'm just closing myself why I'm not going out why I'm not taking care of myself why I went from the girl who usually take great care of her physical appearance and the way she looks and everything to just wearing maybe just a pair of trousers and a hoodie and going out I didn't know what to tell people and then I had this one friend. Yeah. He was like, I know what I know you're going through a tough time. That's okay. But I won't let you sit in that tough time alone. So we're going out and we're just going to walk. We're just going to eat something. We're just going to the movies and we're just going to sit in silence. And I was like, this is what I needed. <laughs> Not someone to push me all the time, express yourself, yeah, express yourself. Yeah. And then when I felt ready, it took me years to be able to tell this friend that, you know, when you reach out to me and you pull me out, I was in a very tough place. I was going through something really tough. I was feeling really low, but I couldn't express it. I couldn't explain. And it's only years later that I, now I can tell you, I was going through this. I was going through this. I was going through this. <sighs> so it, it really takes a lot of time. <clears throat> yeah and we can tell them okay you should go to therapy and and all of that as a friend you can tell your, your closed one 
okay, you don't want to talk to me, go talk to a therapist. But the person going through that is going to feel like if I cannot express what I am going through to my closed ones, how am I going to talk yeah. to a stranger? Yeah. But rest Actually, assured, therapists are trained people who know how to engage the conversation with you and who know how to make you feel comfortable to break the silence and to get out of that cocoon and express yeah. yourself. Wow. <laughs> that's so, so that's profound. A, that's a lot. That's a lot. No, that's so profound. <laughs> what kind of advice would you give to your younger self? What kind of advice I would give to? Your younger self. Oh, my younger self. Uh, if I meet my younger self today, I will tell her, just keep breathing. I know mm. you're going for a tough time. I know that the days right now are hard, but there is always a sun behind the clouds. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the, the dark clouds, no matter how thick they are, no matter how gloomy it is, they dissipate. There is always a sun behind the clouds. Oh. <clears throat> And this is not only to my younger self because the, the, the tough days don't, don't like, they don't last forever, yes. but they don't go away forever as well. So you mm. have like a wave. It, we go up and down, we go up and down. We have our happy days, we have our low moments. Mm. So this is something I remind myself even now when I go through a tough time, uh, I say, okay, today is not a good day, but yeah. it might be just five minutes it's not going to last the whole day. Mm. And even if it lasts the whole day, like there is a pattern, there's a sequence of not so good things happening during the whole day. I'm like, let's go to bed. Let's be grateful. There has to be at least one good thing that has happened to you. Let us focus on that one good thing. Let us be grateful for that. Let's go to bed and tomorrow is a new day. We're not going to repeat today, tomorrow. Wow. Who are you inspired by? Say again? Who are you inspired by? My Guruji, my spiritual master. Yeah. He is the one, yes. He is the one who has inspired me through the years. Actually, he was my high school teacher. Wow. And I met, yeah, I met him when I was 15 years old. And he was my English teacher at high school. And he was already a spiritual teacher also at that time. Okay. <clears throat> but then it took me 15 years to connect again wow. and to become his spiritual student and to become his disciple. How does it feel working with, <laughs> working with someone who you grew up looking up to? Oh, um, it's an incredible feeling. It's like, you know, we have that. Um, it's a very deep spiritual connection and relationship. Yeah. Um, he is my spiritual master. He is my guru. He is also my spiritual father. Yeah. And his wife is my spiritual mother. Wow. And you know, like <clears throat> you do have like your, your family, your blood family, your relatives. Mm -hmm. But when you connect with that spiritual family, it's really deep. It's another level of connection. Mm -hmm. And the love which is there, it is. I've experienced I, unconditional love with my Guruji and his wife. Mm. That, that, this is what has changed me. This is what has, it, it, it changed my heart, I can say. Yeah. Yeah. Share with us the, the amazing work that you're doing, the roadshow. Yeah, the mental health roadshow, because we are having one this week. Uh, yeah. So this Friday, yeah, this Friday in Mauritius, we're going to have a mental health roadshow. So it is a monthly event that Anwar Madebokas and myself um, do in different shopping malls. And we are so, so grateful to the amazing marketing teams of each of these malls uh, for um, supporting us mm. in raising awareness around mental health and all, and all of that. <clears throat> so what we do is just, we set up four chairs two for ourselves and two for anyone who wants to come and sit and have a conversation and talk about anything that's worrying them, any wow. emotional pain that they're feeling. And we just sit there, you know? 
And we, wow. we just took a look. Okay, if you need someone, we have a, a really nice poster. Yeah. That we put next to them. Uh, uh, if you need to talk to someone, we are here to listen to you for free. Mm. So we decided that for at least for a few hours, one day per month, we give of our time to people. Yeah. Wow. So that when they're doing when they're doing their shopping and everything, so something might have been bothering them, something might have been been heavy on their heart, and they don't have anyone who can listen to mm. them, or mm. they're scared that expressing themselves, people might judge them, people yeah. might see them yeah. differently. Yeah. yeah. So we just here, yeah, we just sit there and we welcome those people. How was it like yeah. in the beginning? How was it like in the beginning? <laughs> That was a really new thing because yeah. that was a really new thing. And <clears throat> people were like passing in front of us and looking and looking at the poster and we just greet them. It was a bit difficult. It is still difficult because we have to wear the mask. So, yeah. And we cannot just, sometimes we just drop it and we say, we, we smile to, to the people so that they can see like, they don't have to be scared. They shouldn't be scared so that they can Ooh. see who's behind the mask and yeah. who they're going to sit and talk to. And <clears throat> that's what we do. But nowadays, people like they have become, um, I think, acquainted to that event, to that monthly event, mm -hmm. because we share on social media, we share on our pages, like what, where we're going to be every month. Okay. And also the media in Mauritius has been very very supportive yeah. they have been promoting they have been publishing articles yeah yeah so now most people know about about the activity okay yeah That's great. <laughs> but it was mostly yeah it was mostly to let people know that instead of just saying that okay we are here come to okay. us yeah, <clears throat> we decided to put ourselves forward to be in public and to yeah. sit there and leave them this space mm -hmm. to choose to come and sit and have a conversation. Wow, you you guys <laughs> you guys are doing amazing work, and I'm so so inspired by the work that you're doing. What's next for, for Rebecca? Where would you like to see yourself in the next five or <laughs> ten years? That's a lot. I just hope that I end this year. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you think you're definitely going to end this year. <laughs> yeah. We just hope to, to reach the end of 2022. Yeah. Um, where do I see myself? Um, <clears throat> Just doing, just following the, 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 the guidelines of my Guruji mm. and to be able to, to do what he, he wants me to do. Yeah. It's nothing to do now with my, like, you know, when you go to, to a job interview and they ask you, okay, so what do you want to, to, to do and which position you want to be in, in a few years? Yeah. I think um, <clears throat> I've, I've overcome this stage. Mm. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm, I'm exactly where I have to be and doing what I have to do. Uh, I'm really passionate about healing and teaching healing modalities to people who want and who are willing to learn, helping people overcome difficult moments, difficult situations that they are going through and they cannot see the light at mm. the end, you know, just yeah. try to walk a bit with them until they are like, okay, now I can see the path and I can wow. go on my own. I'm like, fine. But in the years to come, I'm not going to say where do I see myself in three years, five years or 10 yeah. years, but in yeah. the years to come, I just um, hope that I'll be able to do what my Guruji wants me to do. Wow. That's all. Wow. <laughs> <sighs> and maybe visit you in South Africa or you come to Mauritius and we can have a chat uh, around a coffee cup you know that would be amazing <laughs> that, that would be so we need to make it happen we need to make it happen, to happen. like in the next two or three years i'm definitely gonna meet you guys and we're gonna do some incredible work this is happening this is happening definitely definitely <laughs> do you have any books recommendations books that you have helped you maybe along the way 
Oh, yes, there are a lot of books and um, one which I'm rereading at the moment. Yeah. It is a book by uh, Radhanath Swamiji and it is called The Journey Home. Okay. It's about so the journey. Yeah. It's about spirituality. So uh, Radhanath Swamiji, he is a, a spiritual guide, a spiritual master. He's a monk um, who has traveled from America and the book is about his life, how he, how he received his calling, how he went through uh, every situation, how he overcame situation until he reached India because there was something deep inside his heart calling him to India and uh, to engage on his spirituality. Wow. So this is an amazing book. And <clears throat> each time I read it, it's like I'm... Um, I'm reading it for the first time or I'm understanding the meaning of what he is conveying as a message in this book for the first time. Okay. Yeah. So this is one book that I recommend. The next book I recommend is also, um, well, our, our book that Guruji recommends all is to read the Bhagavad Gita okay. because it is a book, uh, it is a book, um, it is a conversation between God and um, and Arjuna, and it he shares everything that we need to know, and we need actually to be able to live right now at this moment, and to be able to go through and to be able to overcome situations and everything. Okay. Um, this is one book, and there is another beautiful book by uh, written by a shaman. Uh, it, the name of the book is called The Heart of a Shaman by Alberto Villoldo. Okay. <laughs> I don't know the books. I'm definitely going to check them out. I'll send you all the book titles Please. and then you can look for them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this is another amazing book as well. And he speaks about the shaman way, the shaman dreaming and how shamans have a vision and how they bring this vision to life and, and all of that. So it, it takes you like really from this perspective, like it moves you from this material world to see beyond the material, mm -hmm. to see beyond the illusion and to see that the spiritual world is very real. Yeah, yeah. Any, <coughs> do you have any last words that you want to leave us with? Um, what can I tell you? Just... Be happy. Oh. There is so much happening around us. Like, don't lose your time with futile things, futile situations, and don't lose your energy with being angry or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I know it's an emotion. We have a range of emotions. We are humans. We have to like experience them, maybe many of them in, in a day. But remember that being happy is your birthright as a human. Oh, um, I say, try to do at least one thing every day, one little thing that makes you feel happy. Right. And that's it. That's <laughs> and practice gratitude. People, please practice gratitude. That's a super medicine because when you're grateful, there's no room for complaint. Mm. Mm. Um, where can people get hold of you? Where can people can get? Get hold of you. Like on social media. Okay. <laughs> on social media. So I am on Facebook. I am on Instagram. I am on LinkedIn. Uh, uh, on TikTok, but I don't post videos. <laughs> 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 and but mostly, mostly on Instagram. I'm really, really uh, like um, mostly active on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. I try to, to reply to uh, all messages. Mm -hmm. I try my best at least. Yeah. And, then, and, uh, and that's it. The name uh, you can find me on those uh, social media pages is with the name Healing with Wolves. This is the question <laughs> which I ask all my guests. Rebecca, mm -hmm. when it is all said and done, how mm -hmm. would you like to be remembered? Uh, how would I like to be remembered? I don't know. I haven't thought about this. Yeah. 
<laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I let people choose how they want mm. to remember me. Mm. 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 They, they choose. Yeah. Thank From you. their experience, they had what they want to remember yeah. and how they want to remember. It's up to people. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so Thank much, you. Freedom. I would like to host you again soon <laughs> so that we continue this conversation. That was a real pleasure talking to you and having this conversation. Thank you so much. And thank you for the amazing job that you're doing. And I viewed your channel. I viewed your pages. I see what you're doing out there. Please keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. <laughs>